please give it up for the man who wrote, well, some would say it was initially Brian O'Driscoll's autobiography, <laughs> inspired by, potentially, we will soon find out, he is the man behind the Ross O'Carroll Kelly series. Please give it up for Paul Howard. How are you? I'm oh, great. Uh, this is my second time here uh, this week, actually. I was here on Sunday night uh, at Christaburg. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting right at the back, and all I could see in the first sort of six or seven rows at the end when he played Patricia the Stripper, he sang Patricia the Stripper, was people taking off their underwear and, and throwing on the st stage. So this is, uh, I admire your restraint, <laughs> actually. <laughs> So is it just pure coincidence that Ross O'Carroll Kelly came on the scene as the exact same time as Brian O'Driscoll came on the scene? Say yes. Say <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, it is really. I mean, I, I had been covering schools rugby for, for years and years. And I covered this match once, and I heard uh, a kid from a school. I won't say the school's name. It wouldn't be fair. Blackrock College. <laughs> and... <laughs> He, he, I heard him say to his dad, I don't give a fuck how you think I played, just crack open the wallet. <laughs> uh, does that sound familiar? <laughs> sometimes I tell people that it was Brian, you know, just, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't. But when, when, I, um, <laughs> when, I, when I started writing um, Ross O'Carroll Kelly, all these stories were in my head from covering, from covering the games. And... Uh, it was just all there on instant recall. Um, so, yeah, it was a kind of lifetime of it. So when you sit down for the first time and go, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something together, have you a very clear picture as to where it's going to go, or did that just evolve, or did the pages end up writing themselves? Or how? Yeah, I mean... I live, I live with, a, with an author, right. and I, I'm flabbergasted at, at how... You have a blank page, and all of a sudden, yeah. you just it's a brain dump. And, and then you know, and Amy, Amy has the discipline yeah. to actually sit there and, and look at the blank page and, and wait for inspiration to strike. I suppose, I mean, like I said, I'd, I'd, covered, I'd covered so much schools rugby. I didn't understand schools rugby. I didn't understand rugby when I started writing about it. And I was, I was sent by the Independent, Irish Independent, when I was about 17 or 18 to cover a match in Skerries. And I remember reading a book called The Laws of Rugby on the bus to Scaries. The, the bus to Scaries used to take about five hours in those days. And it was the only bus I ever saw with a, with a duty-free trolley service on it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I, I sort of went out there and I just, I was kind of blown away by the sort of pageantry, by the colour of schools rugby. We, we, I went to a football school. We were very good at football. Uh, I didn't really know anything about rugby, which is why I was reading the laws of rugby. But, you know, if 20 people stayed behind to watch a match, you were lucky. And these schools matches, there'll be like thousands of people who never really, who've left school, you know, 30 years earlier, but they're still aligned to their school, you know? And, see, and, and seeing all these, you know, these mothers like in seal fur, like standing with, with like, <laughs> like, I've never saw women in seal fur watching sport before, <laughs> in scaries, like, you know, and, uh, and dads on the, the early mobile phones, like in 1996, when no one had a mobile phone, <laughs> shouting, doing business on the sideline, and, and then these gangs of girls just throwing themselves at these horrifically ugly rugby players in a lot of cases, like, you know, press and company accepted, <laughs> right, you know, and, and I just God, the old rugby's <laughs> great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it's, it's, it's ripe for sending up. But when I, I started writing the column in the Sunday Tribune, and for the first two or three years, finally getting to your question, uh, I didn't put my name on it. So it was just the diary of a school's rugby player by Ross O'Carroll Kelly. And no one knew it was me for about three years, but everybody was guessing who it might be. I told some people it was Ryle Nugent once for fun. And, <laughs> and somebody attacked him in a pub once, and I happened to be with him at the time. <laughs> and, and this guy said to Ryle, he got him up against the wall, and I just slammed him up and said, some of us have to live in Tala. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I had written something about 
Tala the week. I'd written something. The joke was Ross was, had his mobile phone stolen, and he was going out to Tala to get it back. And he falls asleep, <laughs> falls asleep in the car, and he looks out the window, and he goes, Jesus, look at this place. The horror, the deprivation. How do people live like this? And his friend says, Ross, we're still in Terra <laughs> Right? <laughs> so that's the joke. The, you know, the that's joke. <laughs> the joke is Terra <laughs> This guy thought the joke was Tala, and he gets Ryle up against the wall. Some of us have to live in Tala. Ryle hadn't a clue what he was talking about. <laughs> but I did. So being a good friend, I just started moonwalking out of the pub and, and I left, you know. But anyway, so nobody knew I was writing it. But then Ross left Castle Rock College and went to UCD and he, he did a sports management course in UCD. And one of, the, uh, one of his classmates, I didn't know it at the time, was, was Brian O'Driscoll. And I had never heard of Brian O'Driscoll. It was around 1998. Yeah, around that time. So people used to ring the Tribune and they'd say, uh, you have to tell me, I'm in UCD, you have to tell me who's writing that column. Is it Drico? <laughs> and, and Drico, it turned out, was you, or Scals. Kieran Scally mm. was, was uh, a suspect for a while. So I used to just say yes, you know. So if there is a crossover between, between Brian and Ross, it's because I did encourage that, that view. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, guilty earlier on, foolishly, of underestimating the amount of Munster supporters were here, but just so we know what type of audience we have, how many people here played Schools Cup Rugby? They were a bit slow to mm. put their hands up there. There's always about five times more people uh, play, claim to play Schools Cup Rugby than actually did play Schools <laughs> Cup Rugby. How many people here have a Leinster School Senior Cup medal? <laughs> <laughs> How aware of you were this? Were you of this then around 98, 99? Yeah, a bit, but it's delighted you know, with it's, it. I wouldn't say delighted. I'm also, you know, I speak like this now, but I'm from the north side. I'm not meant to speak like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I hear it in my kids now. It's like, you're definitely not meant to speak like that, you know? Um, so I was always kind of fighting that, and, and I thought, it can't be based on me because Ross is you know, proper Southside. Yeah. Um, so I was like, no, 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 it's not. Um, but it really, I suppose in those early days, it was a bit of fun, but then it's evolved into this absolute beast over 20 monster, years. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so what we see now, you know, you look back retrospectively, it was, it was a fraction of where, where it's at now. And there's not many people in Ireland don't know Ross O'Carroll Kelly. You know, whether it's your thing to read or not, but you know, some, like, some of the lines, I don't care who you are, are absolutely brilliant. Thank you. So, um, no, I, I, I kind of, I enjoyed reading, I read some of the early books, and I'm in the middle of Schmidt Happens, um, <laughs> and enjoying it. Uh, and Brian features in just about every book as well, like in some form Mr. Royalties. Like, you know? <laughs> I, I, I want to nip that one on the board now. <laughs> 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 And just say no. <laughs> was it something that was talked about in the Leinster dressing room? Pointing um, of fingers? Not really, not really. Um, no, it was, I think, if, if someone who was, was the, the piss most taken like out of them. Ross O'Carroll Kelly. Who was what? Who was the most like Ross O'Carroll Kelly in that Leinster dressing room? <laughs> You're amongst friends here. It's off yeah. record. <laughs> Put off that phone. Ian, Ian Madigan and Luke. Um, <laughs> would, be, would be both strong contenders. I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm really looking forward to, to hearing about Jamie Heaslip's podcast in the next edition <laughs> as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's definitely a bit of Ross in, in, in Jamie, you know? Um, Which bit? <laughs> well, I'm ja like, Jamie... <laughs> Like, J Jamie's amazing because, like, you know, they say, you know, they, they, they try to kind of combat this notion that rugby is a South Dublin thing, and they say, you know, Jamie Heaslip's from Kildare. And then you hear Jamie Heaslip speak. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no Kildare accent, <laughs> you know? The latest book, number... It's, it's number 19 in the, in the trilogy. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Nobody, Stouted, no, Nobody Shouted Stop. <laughs> Schmidt Happens. Yeah. Did you send it to Joe Schmidt? Uh, well, people keep asking. I did. I did send him a copy. But people keep asking, did you, did you ask his permission? And my, my view on that has always been, it's, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. 
because there's a chance they might say no. So uh, about six or seven years ago, I wrote a book uh, called Triggs, the Autobiography of Roy Keane's Dog. And I had the same questions then, did you ask for Roy Keane's permission? And, you know, it was, I didn't, but that was mostly uh, out of fear <laughs> of, of what he might do I don't to know me. why. It's, it's a little bit like going in and showing your next door neighbors your plans for your extension in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're better off just going ahead and doing it. <laughs> and they're looking out the back saying, what is Brian doing next door? Um, I, 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 so I decided the college Schmidt happens, and I was doing um, a, a, an interview, a charity thing for Purple House and Bray, and I was interviewing Joe and Andy Farrell and Simon Easterby and Richie Murphy uh, in the Burlington, and we decided on the title of the book, and I said, let's just keep the title quiet until after I meet Joe Schmidt on Thursday week. But I made the mistake of telling uh, Richie Murphy uh, what the title of the book was, and he said, oh, you want to keep that quiet, like Joe, Joe won't be happy with that at all. And he said, but trust me, I won't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> so Richie, uh, as soon as I left, I was meeting Richie in the Burlington a couple of weeks before, and as soon as I left, Richie rang Joe Schmidt and said, you know the next book is called Schmidt Happens? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I went in on the night of the gig thinking Joe didn't know anything about this, and I asked the first question, I was in your role that night, I asked the first question, and Simon Easterby cut across me and said, well, let me ask you a question. What do you mean writing a book with a title that takes the piss out of the national coach? And, there were, and Joe was just glowering at me. Anyway, it was about 10 seconds of uncomfortable silence before Joe laughed. And then, and then that was it. Uh, Jamie Heaslip's autobiography, a, a bestseller, I presume, is very much out there right now. It's sort of overshadowing Gordon Darcy's autobiography. Which yeah. You, it, which you wrote is just out this week. Now, it's a kid's book. Yes. Why yeah. is that? <laughs> or does this make total sense? Um, it, it's, uh, there's something about Gordon's career that was uh, that's sort of perfect for telling as a kid's story. There's a, there's a moral at the end of it, and it's kind of the story of a, of, uh, of a young man who gets it all very early, gets it all too soon, and loses the run of himself a little bit, and then is kind of... Pushed, pushed, in, pushed to the sidelines and realizes he has to go away and invent himself all over again. And uh, when, when Gordon rang me and said, I want to do a book, I, I, my first reaction was, how am I going to get out of this? Like, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I, as, a, as, a, as a former sports journalist who's written, you know, 19 books about rugby, people think I actually know something about rugby. <laughs> so you do, I do get asked from time to time to do to ghostwrite, and I, I didn't want to do it. Um, and then when he said, I want to do it as a kid's book, I thought, wow, what a great idea. And it's different. So I, never, I, never, I don't think anyone's done it before. Like I, I, start, I don't think any Irish sports person has ever told their story as a kid's book with a, with a moral at the end that you know, eight, eight to 12-year-old kids can read and, and, and get something from. Is the moral of the story, screw that other guy who takes all the glory? <laughs> <laughs> Does he feature? <laughs> yeah, I was telling Brian beforehand, uh, Gordon's heroics actually overshadow Brian's a lot of the time. You know? right. and there's some tries Brian's scored in his career that are like, strikingly similar to ones we've described <laughs> Gordon scoring in the book. So taking some of your heroics, I hope you don't mind. And it's, it's, it's one of... We, yeah, I mean, more, this is the first. Will there be the more first. than one? I mean, we're, we're, we're planning to do three altogether. Okay. 19, um, so. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I always start off planning to do yeah. three and then no, don't know where to stop. I'll be up here at 65 years of age, still writing them. We are here tonight with thanks to Heineken, official worldwide partner of Rugby World Cup Japan 2019. Coming up a little bit later, don't forget we have our crappy quiz where one of you in the audience is going to be able to chance of winning a pair of tickets to the 2020 Heineken Champions Cup in Marseille with flights and accommodation included. Remember to be able to chance of winning. Just tweet a selfie of yourself in the crowd, the hashtag OTBBGET. Paul, it's been brilliant to have you with us. Pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us on stage.